Welcome to the August 3rd meeting of the Wareboard Selectmen. Uh, join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comment. Once, twice? No, nobody. Is that a yes, Frank? Okay. No? Okay. I think your agenda is pulling up for tonight. <laughs> okay. Oh, Scraggler? No? Maybe? No. Once, twice, sold. Okay. Department head committee items. I'm going to go with Ryan. Recognize yeah. Sergeant well, Frisbee. Actually, um, or no, Sergeant McGuire. Um, Sergeant McGuire has a um, just an update on the radios. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sergeant McGuire. Austin, if you could, we can't. Yeah, the yeah. microphone doesn't pick up through the. No, you're good. <laughs> we work together in the same office. Uh, Sergeant McGuire with the Board Police Department. I uh, come here tonight just to provide you guys with an update. We spoke. I think it was two weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing is I asked R and R to get a hold of me, and they provided me with the information that was requested, which is what's been done uh, since I guess we've all started this project. Mm -hmm. They provided me with a list, which I'll provide you guys a copy of. Um, there's quite a few things here, uh, which is kind of like talking about their updates to their uh, rev uh, repeater voter sites and um, their recent overhaul. The next thing is uh, speaking with. I reached out to uh, Milford Police Department. Uh, they had that study done. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so they used one company. They did a $25,000 study, and that was for a dispatch center trying to get it transferred to their department in surrounding areas. However, that study did not provide them with all the information that they were initially looking for. It was more like open-ended, like, here's what your issues are, your wasn't really solution based. Mm -hmm. They hired another company uh, that cost approximately eighty five thousand dollars, but that included the RFP in the study, which again was for a whole dispatch center, not just here's a here's a geog uh, geographical area. Mm -hmm. It was everything. Okay. So a dispatch center, their infrastructure, and just checking the geography of the surrounding areas. I contacted that company today. They were highly recommended by Milford PD. And I kind of explained what we were looking for. Um, she, the woman I spoke with, stated that uh, they could provide me with a little bit of information via email, and they would provide me with an estimate. Mm -hmm. um, she was hoping by the end of this week, but it could be next week as well. Okay. Um, they said that they could do multiple scenario-based, and uh, I also spoke with Goffstown to see what they were going to be doing. Um, they said they were unsure if they were going to be doing a study. They would like to, but they just don't know if it's going to be possible. Mm -hmm. um, but they said if we decided to do a study on our end, that they would obviously work with that company to provide them whatever information they needed to ensure the success for us. Okay. And I think that's uh, everything, and I will run this to you guys. Now, Goffstown, Base 100, <coughs> they dispatch PDYs for Dunbarton, New Boston, Ware, and Goffstown. Are there any others? No. They do, and then they do three fire departments, New Boston, Ware, and Goffstown. Okay. What's New Boston feeling on the radio system? Has any, Have we heard from them or talked to them? Uh, I have not talked with New Boston because I talked to Goffstown because they're our dispatch center. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if they're having similar pains that we are. I know that uh, just in speaking in passing that they had um, some, they had a radio project that was done, but I don't know the extent of what their, uh, project, you know, was it, was it completed or not? I don't know. Um, I know in talking with Dumbarton, they've had some issues. With they're, di they're digital, though, so that's... A they have a, yeah, they have, like, a one repeater, and I don't know if it's as high as it probably needs to be, but they said that they have issues, too, yeah. in Dumbarton. Um, they've tried our channel in the past to see if that would resolve it, but obviously, based on locations... Yeah, a little harder for them. Probably. It was a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Naomi, can we reach out to New Boston and see what they've done in terms of studies and such? Now, just the police or police and fire? They do. They dispatch for both. If both are having pains, and both, I guess. Yeah, I don't know who they use for a radio vendor. If it's a single source or so, or if they're uh, using to see the if they had it now upgrades. I believe or they're using the same. See if they see if they've done any kind of 
if there if there been complaints, if there have been complaints, have there been any resolutions to them? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we this is an entire system. Not it's not just one department that's having the issues. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before you get off the department head, I think the girls wanted to bring something up for Parks and Rec. Okay. Can Can I just make a suggestion? Maybe skip Parks and Rec for a minute. Let's let the continue on with PD because Parks and Rec may last a bit. Is it going to be quick? Do we know? Um, Janine. I have yeah, we, let's do the, because let's I do think them, we're gonna because I think we're gonna we were gonna talk about the um, facilities use by Palmasaro. Yeah, and, the and then the tennis courts. Okay. So we yeah, we'll just do those for now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think okay. that what you're thinking, yeah, that could go into a lot longer, but yeah, no, that's fine. Yep. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. Janine Lynch, Parks and Recs Chairman. So. Um, so first of all, there was a facility use form um, filled out for the gazebo mm -hmm. from Paul Masiaro. Mm -hmm. um, it's the so it's the high school boosters. Um, he's done it before, but the high school is not allowing him to do it right now because they've closed everything up. But he thought even doing on the gazebo like they'd done at the um, old home days before would be really good exposure. So we reached out to him with just a couple of our questions about, you know, the, and he answered, we had three questions. If, where the car show cars were actually going to be located, and he said parked on the grass. Mm -hmm. And then where the pe spectators, he said, well, most of the spectators are the car show owners, but they, you know, they anticipated a few more, and he thought they could just be on East Road, just on the So there's, I know there's a few spots in the dirt pull-off um, right before the school, and then I'm assuming he just thought maybe they could line up. Is the, the school field. parking lot off limits? That's a public parking lot. Not to my knowledge. I didn't. So they and could I go didn't in there and park and walk down. Right. right. I didn't say yay or nay. I just said where. What was your plan? Sure. And okay. you know, I didn't even say middle school or not. Yep. Mm -hmm. But the parking, the playground is open, so I, the parking lot I would assume is open. So mm -hmm. that's that's how I feel too, because mm -hmm. um, they're not going to use the the school's grass. Right. That was my big concern. And then um, to ask if it was going to be a carry in carry out event not needing trash and he said absolutely so um as far as everyone on the board reached out to me it sounded it was fine with us how many potential participants Ooh, have there been in the past um gosh i'm trying the to remember last time i seen okay yeah, then old I'm home show the vehicles yeah. if it's rainy I, I don't know. I probably remember seeing 20, maybe 20. I was going to say I was thinking going to say under 30. Yeah. The first time I went to was under 30. All right. Oh. Mhm. Mm so we closed all facilities to include the gazebo, did we not? We didn't close no, any no, facilities the except the playground at Bolton was closed. But oh. I think because doesn't the gazebo fall in with this town hall? And I think we discussed the gazebo. Well, the the conservation used it for a meeting. We used it okay. for a meeting. So, and I know there's been people over there. That okay, I just want to make sure we're, we're yeah. following the proper There's been procedure. another meeting over there as well, which was with the Boy Scouts, so that they could sit mm -hmm. on each of the okay. diagonals and be away from each other. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's probably a little bit different than the town hall where it's open. Yep. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure it, no, we didn't I agree. close it, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we did. Okay. Yeah, so um, Paul had asked because you know just to see what it was happening i forwarded to you guys and i forwarded it to them it's kind of a you know it's more their facility but it, we mm -hmm. did include it in our new facility plans mm -hmm. but i wanted us to be on the same page therefore that's why i reached out to both places so i guess um typically i think it has my <laughs> signature name on the bottom so um if you guys park and rec is fine with it and you're okay with it my only thought was just being sure that uh, any is noted any damage to the lawn is repaired by them Okay. Some of these older cars might have a little issue getting out of the grass. Cleanly. <laughs> Cleanly, right. Oh, come on. They'll all just help push. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's probably, the, I mean, the carnival probably does the, Most the same damage. thing. Having oh, I'm sure. But clean up um, and stuff. This is a nonprofit, yes? Yeah. It's the yeah. Boosters, it's yeah. The boosters. It's okay. a fundraiser. Uh, organization. 
Ins do we have to worry about insurance or anything like that? I bet they have insurance, which yeah. he could probably just add us as an additional insurance. Yeah, that would work. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Just as long as that's taken care of, just in case mm -hmm. this new gazebo we have just got damaged or something like that, just to yeah. cover every all bases. Okay. Does the electricity need to be turned on? I think it's already on. It's during the day. It's on. I don't think they... Let's say I have some speakers or something like that. Oh, I don't know. It's on anyway, they can plug Oh, it in. is? Okay. Yeah. I'm for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. The consensus is okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He wrote, let me see, I was going to say uh, September 13th, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That was set up and clean up. I think yeah. the show is shorter amount of time. What's the date? September, September 13th, oh, Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Sunday. Yeah. Sunday, September 13th. Task force. Yes. Okay. So, um, Denise mm -hmm. Harrington mm -hmm. is uh, on uh, where people who are committees met with us a few times. They've really been using the courts a lot and very well with the tennis players. They both kind of all been working together and alternating days and times. So the courts are seeing lots of use from all different age groups at all different times and. She's just really hoping to see about getting the court repaired. You'd seen the pictures with the cracks and everything. And um, so she reached out to us at one of the meetings if she could help because she had mentioned the uh, Mildred Hall Fund. And we, well, as Parks and Recs, we're not allowed to explore that type of option. So she went to ask questions. First, she started reaching out to a couple vendors um, to get basically to help us. So we've been a little busy with. Chase Park and um, one vendor declined interest uh, one wrote back which you can see the sheet I handed out tonight and another asked for more information about the size of the cracks the lengths of the cracks and pictures is, and has yet to get back to her um, so she did speak to Betty Straw um, about the Mildred Hall fund and based on the information she provided her doesn't really look like that fund would be an option she believed that the repair of the tennis court was presented to them in the past and was denied so it was suggested to her that she reach out to the trustees of the Emma Sawyer fund um, which she did and they indicated that she needed to seek approval from the selectmen to speak to the Emma Sawyer fund so that was her um, big ask um, she was hoping to be here tonight, but I believe she's out of town, so she wasn't able to make it. Mm -hmm. um, and then she goes on to explain that um, the courts are being used at least four to five mornings a week between 8 and 11.30 for pickleball, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sunday mornings for tennis, and some evenings for pickleball again, and some afternoons for tennis. Many groups and couples using the court are retired over the age of 55. Um, go senior activities and um, so they and they've been cleaning up and they've been trimming brush and they um, have a locker over there where they put their nets away so when people come to play tennis it's not in the way and they leave the, the tennis lines are there their lines are different colors so it cohesively really goes together and um, so she just wanted to see if there's information that she could find out more about the Emma Sawyer fund and so as Janine had said, Linda Fiala had reached mm -hmm. back to me um, because Denise had reached out to get on the agenda and just seeking permission as long as, I think the more the permission that we were aware that she was going, because she's a resident, not a committee member, seeking funding. Mm -hmm. So I think John had sent me an email um, earlier today asking about the Emma Sawyer. So I really don't know what the Emma Sawyer, but they know what uh, guidelines are. So typically you make a stop at the trustees of the trust fund, give them your pitch, which Denise is willing to do next week at their meeting, and see if they could fund, you know, what they might be able to do. And then I think what we should do um, is what I mentioned to John, is we would get back together, whether she goes back to park and mm -hmm. does a CIP with funding through assistance of the Emma Sawyer. Um, maybe Emma Sawyer does it all, but I think we could collectively stay in touch with each other. But to give a resident to go and pitch money to be spent, um, Linda just wanted to make sure that A, we knew about it, and B, we gave her permission. Mm -hmm. So that's what really she's asking for. 
she's helped out Janine getting the legwork and doing the legwork, but she's not a committee member. Right. I, I don't have a problem myself with them seeking that option, at least just to talk to the committee. It's not binding. Right. The conversation is not binding, so I have no problem with them going to talk to her. Um, for argument's sake, if the Emma Sawyer Fund has the funding to do it all, and I don't know, would the purchasing policy be in effect for this or no? I oh, would, we'd have to put it out to bid. It'd have to go to oh, bid, yes. It would. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So far, she's asked three places. <laughs> so there you go. So. Yeah, she's still waiting. But one said no, thank you. Right? Yeah. That well, counts. Talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. um, yeah, I have no problem with, with them going to see it. See well, to start. Place. Right. Baby steps. Okay. That's all I got for now. All right. All right. See you later. Yep. A little later. <laughs> thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So again, you the consensus is to be fine. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It, it's an early discussion phase, so yeah. Yeah. Right. Is the rest of the crowd coming in? Or are we going out? I'm, I'm gonna go grab them and bring. Them right. Yeah, I think we're, we're, I all, just, we're ready I for just, that. I just. Yeah. I mean, you're talking, all right. Yeah. I heard you guys say quarter of, so that's why I tried to keep yeah. it a quarter of. So. <clears throat> Recognize Sergeant Frisbee. So I'm Sergeant Frisbee. I'm here on behalf of Chief Moore. Um, obviously, we'll start with the recommendation to hire Tom Ouellette. When he shows up? When he shows up, yes. <laughs> I think he's got family too, right? Yes, he does. Try to. Yeah. Just going to try to adhere to the six-foot spacing rule if it's possible. If they have a mask on. Yeah. If oh, it's I, think, I think they all have masks on. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, because they had asked, uh, Emily had asked me about the family coming and I asked that they wear masks if we're going to be in a close mm -hmm. and yep. there was no problem with that. Right. This is yours. Yeah, the bottom part for swearing in. I need to sign somewhere there too, don't I? You can uh, sign it now if you want and don't have to worry about plan. it. You have two places. I'm down here, right? Above the town clerk line. I can't remember. It says you swore them in. Yes. <laughs> There's some. <laughs> Start the file line. I don't know if somebody wants to you can sit over here. Someone can sit there, I don't have a problem. No, you're gonna need it to read to him. I'm having her sign it. You want me to sign it? Yeah, I sign it. You want me to sign there? Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna have him sign it, and I'm gonna take it back. <laughs> Just try and do this all in a fashion <laughs> order. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I thought you, you have that. I gave it to the individual who's pinning. Gotcha. I knew there's a way of doing this. Sure. And this family, yeah. There's a few more seats if you have masks on. I have masks here if they need them. No, there's no more. There's a few more. It's all the police, they must be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you even brought the trader. <laughs> Emily, front row. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> There's actually a couple more. It's not. It's from Brenna Austin. What do you want? Except me. Gang's all here, then. Okay. Um, on behalf of Chief Moore, I make the recommendation that we retire Tom Boulette. Um, it'd be on a six month probation at step eight pay rate on the CBA scale, which is 2914. Uh, upon completion of probation, then you go to step one or step nine at 3016. Um, his vacation accrual rate, based on experience, uh, we recommend to start at the 11 year accrual rate, which is 200, an 200 hours annual. And in five years, on his anniversary date in 2025, he moves to the 250 hours annual leave accrual rate. Wait for a minute, 
there. You yep. take all that down. Now that's all per the CBA, anyways, right? Yep, CBA agreement. Correct. Based on his tenure. Yep. Right. <clears throat> do you want to give a little backup of Tom? You have a little bit of. I do have that. Chief said that you guys already had it, but I can. Well, we he reiterate. talked to us in non-public about it, and now this okay. is where you can say it. Publicly. Yeah, I can go over. Yeah. Um. So. Thomas Sulet's 43 years old. He's a husband and father of four. He was born in Salem, Massachusetts. Um, he spent time with his three sisters. I'm not too sure what that means, but he has three sisters. Um, he grew up to develop a strong interest in sport-related activities. In 1995, he graduated from the Ipwich uh, High School in Massachusetts. Massachusetts spells everything really weird, Ipwich. Uh, his next chapter involved the U.S. Army, where he ultimately earned the rank of specialist, receiving an honorable discharge in 1999. Um, currently, Tom and his family reside in Bow, New Hampshire. Um, he very much enjoys assisting as a youth sports coach and is um, separating from the Manchester Police Department to become the newest member of our team. Uh, Tom's bringing with him 17 years of New Hampshire law enforcement experience. And like I previously mentioned, uh, it'll be, his hourly rate is going to start at 2914. And obviously, we recommend and are excited to have Tom join our team. Sounds like it. All right. I entertain a motion. I make a motion that we hire Tom Willett at 2914. To start. To start, and then within six months, 3016. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll do a swear in. Come on up. <laughs> I'll slide this way. Tom. No, no, this is Tom. Sorry. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Willett. You solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge. You solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge. Discharge. And perform all the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As a full-time police officer. As a full-time police officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. The Constitution. The Constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> We're trying to find the one with the badge. Yeah. <laughs> 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 long doesn't fall off. Thank you. Welcome Thank you. aboard. Welcome aboard. We got one signature for you, Tom. 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 Tom, we need a signature. Make this really official. Otherwise, it was just make believe. Exactly. <laughs> You're stuck here now, bud. That's it. <laughs> it's in blood now. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, next on the agenda, we have some awards. Just give me one moment. <laughs> All right, so we have several awards. The first two we'll be presenting is the Police Star and the Purple Heart. Uh, so just give you a little back brief. Uh, in the early morning of August 1st, 2019, a, a complaint reported a domestic dispute in progress between husband and wife at their residence on Buckley Road in Ware, New Hampshire. Information provided 
indicated the husband had a history of mental health issues and recently ingested a large amount of antidepressants while commenting on his intention to commit suicide. Officers also understood he was in the possession of a large cache of firearms and had made threatening comments while pointing a shotgun at her. While Police Sergeant Austin McGuire and Officer William Paul Lewis, the third, sixth, fifth, fourth. which number are you, the fourth? <laughs> okay. We're on duty and answered the emergency call for service. Upon arrival, the officers met the mental health crisis victim's wife at the front door to the residence where she informed them that he was armed with a shotgun and would shoot them. The officers inquired where the victim was located and subsequently positioned themselves between both parties in order to protect her from potential harm. The officers also learned the victim had access to multiple firearms, including rifles, which elevated the risk and concern um, at the, as this provided him with the capability to engage them should they attempt to retreat with her back to their vehicles. The officers decided to enter the residence based on the wife being able to identify his last known location and the danger they would face if they tactically withdrawn. Upon entry, they quickly located the victim who was armed with a handgun. Both officers identified themselves and repeatedly ordered the victim to drop the weapon and show his hands. Sergeant McGuire and Officer Lewis showed great restraint to provide him with every opportunity to peacefully surrender. Instead, the victim raised his weapon and pointed it at the officers and gunfire was exchanged. Officer Lewis was struck twice in his strong arm, causing bones to shatter and his weapon to drop. Sergeant McGuire returned fire, causing the victim to retreat. The sergeant extracted Officer Lewis um, and wife back to the patrol vehicles where they could take protective cover. Once at the vehicles, immediate aid was given to Officer Lewis, which included application of a tourniquet as he had lost a significant amount of blood due to an artery being severed by the bullet. Additional multiple partnering units arrived and Officer Lewis was transported to the hospital where he underwent emergency surgery. Sergeant McGuire remained on the scene and directed incoming officers to secure the area. Over the ensuing hours, law enforcement attempted to communicate with the victim in order to seek a peaceful resolution and provide him with the help he needed. Eventually, law enforcement discovered the victim inside deceased from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Sergeant McGuire and Officer Lewis responded to a call for help involving an armed individual in severe emotional distress who had indicated his intentions of committing suicide. The officers willingly responded to the premises and made contact with the wife of the victim. The officers took immediate steps to place themselves between her and the immediate threat to ensure her safety. Upon receiving additional information, the officers entered the residence in an attempt to defuse the situation, but were ultimately confronted by the armed suicidal individual. Despite numerous verbal commands, the victim engaged the officers and threatened their safety by raising and pointing his firearm at them. In exchange of gunfire, Officer Lewis received a significant gunshot wound to his arm. Sergeant McGuire continued to engage the victim. While simultaneously, while simultaneously directing the withdrawal of Officer Lewis and the individual's wife. Due to the actions and bravery displayed by Sergeant McGuire and Officer Lewis, the wife was able to escape the incident without injury. Officer Lewis has since undergone multiple surgeries to repair the trauma and continues to face a long road to recovery. It is for their hero heroic actions, sacrifice, and professionalism that the award committee has approved the following awards. So Austin. So Austin, Sergeant McGuire is, uh, was awarded the police star. The police star is awarded to a police officer who successfully and intelligently performs an, acts of ex performs an act of extraordinary heroism with engaged in personal combat with an armed adversary under circumstances of imminent personal hazard to the officer's life. For this action, on August 1st, 2019, Sergeant McGuire is awarded the police star. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan you're going to look too. Right. <laughs> you going to hold the actual award? <laughs> you going to hold your award? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Whoops. Oh, sorry. Yeah. There, we, there go. we go. Much better. Thank you. <laughs> Officer Lewis. Officer Lewis is awarded the Purple Heart Award. The Purple Heart Award is to a police officer who is seriously wounded under honorable 
conditions as a result of hostile behavior by another or uh, posthumously to the family of a police officer killed in the line of duty under honorable conditions. For this action, for his actions on August 1st, 2019, Officer William Paul Lewis is awarded the police star. Thank you. Just don't turn it around to look at you. <laughs> Mike probably would just for giggles. <laughs> Three or four pictures. Yeah. All right, so three additional awards for uh, Sergeant My Pleasure, uh, Emily Dauphinus, who is the administrative assistant, and Lieutenant Frank Hebert, who could not be here tonight. A um, little back brief. On July 7th, 2020, the New Hampshire Police Standards and Training Council performed an inspection of the Ware Police Department records for hiring personnel and training on use of force, which covered the previous five years. Lieutenant Frank Hebert was delegated oversight of these records uh, during that period, and Sergeant My Pleasure and Administrative Assistant Emily Dauphinus assisting with their management and organization. The inspection revealed the records were impeccable, noting only the location of where firearms training occurred should have been documented in the training record. The attention to detail, organization, and management of the records made by these individuals reflect greatly on the Ware Police Department and Town of Ware as a highly professional organization as observed during this process. It is that reason the following recognition is being awarded. Lieutenant couldn't be here tonight, but Lieutenant Frank Hebert, a certificate of accommodation for leadership, which significantly contributed to the Ware Police Department's successful passing of the New Hampshire Police Training and Standards Council inspection on July 7th, 2020. Uh, Sergeant, my pleasure, and Emily, you want to come up? To Sergeant Brandon, my pleasure, and Administrative Assistant Emily Dauphinus, a letter of recognition for your contribute for your contribute. Uh, wow. Contribution to the Ware Police Department's successful passing of the New Hampshire Police Training and Standards Council inspection of July 7th, 2020. Take those off if you want some picture. Yeah. For picture, yeah. Can you, can you hold your yeah. your oh. Oh, for you? Yeah. Open it up. Uh folder. Yeah. There you go. One more with all eyes open. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, 
Yeah. That concludes everything I have for you guys. Unless you have anything for me. Emily. We are all set. All set. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Okay. Coming. Yeah. 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 Is that AC on? <laughs> AC is on. It's on over here. <laughs> is it on? I can't tell looking at you, but it's on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think with that, you can get rid of me too. Oh, that would be great. That would be wonderful. Hey, Ryan. Yeah. Ryan. That, that would be really good. What he gave you, all those things. Two yeah. seconds. Can you send them some That's a lot of time in the world of us. Starting when? One. I'm with a mess. Two. Yeah. <laughs> Zero. So if you, I'll just have. Again, Sergeant McGuire with Wear PD. I just wanted to present you guys with uh, one thing. Send them and then I can share. Just because oh, okay. it's tough to take notes when you're reading. So. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, in talking with uh, the chief today, uh, it was my understanding that uh, finance director Rouse and our um, communications, or not communications, excuse me, our technology person were working on a grant for MDTs at some point. Yeah, and I, I just wanted so. to, yeah. I just wanted to provide you guys with the sole source letter okay. again okay. for uh, for the patrol PCs. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are we done? That, that was like that was like 13 seconds, but we'll allow it. Okay. That the Thank you, Austin. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to the okay. manifest. Actually, no. Let's hold off yeah. one second on that. Um, there's been a request for a um, non-public under right, but if you turn C it off, at, the you, at the end, I understand that, okay. but I'm just just so that they know. Okay. But I know that they have more to go up with uh, with department heads, correct? Uh, nope. They no, have no, they have no more. No, that's all she was going to do. The rest okay. is on public. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on to the we'll manifest then. Along. All right. Move to order. Treasurer to sign payroll accounts, payables, checks dated August uh, 6, 2020, as including the following manifest. Payroll manifest $70,527.50 for weekly and fire monthly payroll. Accounts payable manifest at $31,126.67. Whereas school district manifest at $300,000. John Stark manifest at $400,000 for a total of $801,654.17. As there is no selections being scheduled for Monday, August 10th, further order the treasurer to sign payroll checks dated August 13th, 2020, estimated to be about $70,000. Furthermore, to order the treasurer to sign up to the amount of 75000 for accounts payables that cannot wait until the next scheduled meeting. Reports and actual check amounts will be reported to the board selected by inclusion in the manifest memo at the next scheduled meeting. Is there a second? Second. Is there enough signatures? Yes. No. I already looked. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just ask. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Yes. Um, there is this one Bank of America thing that was in the box that I that we need to have a um, I make motion. a motion that we ask vice Ch vice chair Hitler to sign that uh, the Bank of America agreement I'll second it. all in favor aye aye I'm staying because I'm signing okay but two is the majority of the three so <laughs> and that moves us to the minutes of 727 which I think we just got this afternoon yeah. so yeah. we'll just table yeah. them yeah which brings us to your report. Mm -hmm. um, you can come in and sit inside if you want now. Okay. <laughs> okay, we talked about that earlier. Oh, that's what Austin handed me for the radios. Sorry. Um, so so I just really have I I sent you guys a um, a uh, employee travel guidance like a policy with this whole did you guys see that Yep. Uh -huh. um, so the 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 company uh, not the, I'm sorry the town that I received or that kind of started this um, was Belmont and Belmont selectmen adopted this policy as you see here um, with Belmont where where is. And then what came up in their public hearing, which um, makes sense to me a little bit, there was a question of should staff quarantine after they've been visited by family, including children who live outside of the New England area? 
Um, there's a lot of family that comes here from other states and stays here. Should they also quarantine versus just the employee leaving the state? That was a question. Um, and then there was a second question asked about what about staff whose children return to school and are sent home with a cold or flu? Should the employee remain out of work until it's confirmed that it was indeed the cold or flu or COVID? So I think with those two thoughts that came up, I'm not sure where they're going to put anything um, in that. Um, she just reached out that any of us that were, might think about using the policy, maybe that we should think about addressing it before we adopt it. So I read through that policy, and, and one of the questions that I was asking myself, if we elect to follow through with this guideline from the, the state, mm -hmm. um, are we required or are we expected to or will we pay that employee for being quarantined? If they will, if they on their own go on vacation, are we going to pay them for being quarantined? Or if they willing to report too? I kind of think you have to because you've. Well, I th I think what you're getting at is so if the employee takes vacation time and opts to go out of the New England area. Yeah, and they come back and we're requiring them to quarantine. One are required to are we required to pay them? To, if not, are we going to pay them? And if so, is that reimbursable under the? Uh, whatever the fund is that we've been yeah well, yeah because it's a requirement that we're in for that we are requiring it's if, not if we're requiring it then I, I think, think you have, have to, to. And, and that's where I have an issue okay. if, if say if I want to go to vacation for two days to New York for the weekend but you're you're all right because New York's included no New York's no, not well, well, okay fine, hot fine Pennsylvania oh. any place outside of New yeah. England if I take two days to go there for, say, a wedding or something like that, now I come back, okay, great, hey, I went to New York, now you have to pay me for taking two weeks off. That, I think that's just wrong. I, I'm not going to say employees do that, but that mm -hmm. that's, could be this is, Yeah, This is the era where that can happen more frequently yeah. than it can in the past. Um, so if it's something that we're going to adopt, I'd like clarification as to whether we're required to pay for them to be stay at home. And what kind of documentation do they need to supply that states that you know their timeline that they were out they've got plane tickets out of the area and come back that no that no because we have no right to ask legally well where were you on well vacation? well my thing is if you're well i think i think with that if if they're going to a hot spot i think we do have the legal obligation to ask i don't know for sure but i would like to think so because i could tell you i oh, just because i could tell you i went to maine and fly to florida and you would know the difference or i could just tell you i there's none of your business Right. So housing I mean, it's a so, privacy thing. So to ask enforced, how then. it's enforced, um, I can ask Laura, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. I'm not sure yeah. how someone handles the, mm -hmm. if you're going to say to heck with them going on my vacation, not lose my tickets. Right. Then mm -hmm. what do you do when you come back? Right. Good point. Um, so right. there's a lot of questions. Another question. There's, there's yeah. more questions than answers, I think, with that. Right. So it's just um, I just wanted to bring what came up at their hearing, which mm -hmm. um, I understand the concern and mm -hmm. the desire for this. There's just too many loose ends that I'm not comfortable with right. putting this in play in play okay. just yet, at least right now. OK, well, just I guess keep it in the back of your mind. I don't as we move into this is vacation season. Mm -hmm. um, oh, absolutely. Most everybody here is either staying locally or mm -hmm. well, staying I can think of one states. particular employee that is currently out in the oh. west way out yeah. yeah and i don't know if that's technically a hot spot but if that particular person comes back are we going to require them to stay out for right. two more weeks right mm. and, and i think that's that's where it boils back to it if it's if it's deemed a hot spot by i don't know whoever i think that's when you have to enforce it yeah and then who are we going to who are we going to follow that says okay it's a hot spot CDC, WHO. <laughs> I don't know. It's everybody says everything's a hot spot nowadays. Right. So well, I can tell you that they've had no cases at all in the town that they're in. No, they haven't. <laughs> no, but none, re none reported right. to the state. Among but this particular guideline says just out of New England. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's such a blanket statement. That's that's yep. the concern. Right. Yeah. So more questions and answers. Well, no, it's just um, it's but circulating around, just trying to keep yep. you up with what everybody else is doing. Yeah. They're food throwing around policies. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we may want to think of it if crops up worse. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>
Yeah. Just a food for thought. Um, secondly, um, there, um, Ricky forwarded it to me, and I think I forwarded it to you guys this evening, that from the, um, there's a survey in regards to the foam. Is that right? Yeah, the PFAS. Uh, the firefighting foam. Yeah. Um, so I forwarded it on to Chief Azina as the mm -hmm. fire chief should fill right. that out. Yeah. So um, it's in your emails if you have. I figured seen that's it. where it go, but I didn't see where it went anywhere on the. Yeah, it, list, you can't so. see the whole list. I did get it, and I got it from you. That's okay. why I forwarded it. But uh, he but probably got it as well. I'm assuming he did. I just wanted yeah. to make sure that it okay. went through the channels. You emailed that to us, Naomi. Yeah, I forwarded it to you. Mm -hmm. um, there's a survey that needs to be filled out re uh, before the end of September. By the chief. By the chief. And it requires yep. no action of the board. No, Correct. no, it does no. require no action. Um, and then lastly, before we go to the non-public, um, all right, hang okay. on one sec. Um, uh, I forwarded all to you a letter <coughs> um, with Sherry's other hat on about the Historical Society and a gentleman that would like to have his name or qualifies to have his name put on the rotunda, mm -hmm. tundra, excuse me. Um, and she's proposed that either we had one person do it, she would watch this one person. Now, keep in mind that's about town building that's closed. Mm -hmm. So, which I think is why the whole um, letter came. Um, it's our responsibility to maintain it and to add the name. Um, so, with the approval of adding it, the society's willing to carry out the necessary work. Um, but it's our pleasure as to what we want as the owner of the building. If we approve adding the name but wish to have the work done by others, they're acceptable to that as well. Um, also note that the society is following the town's policy of closing the building during the pandemic, so public access is not allowed. However, inscribing a name on the rotundra. Memorial Wall would involve one person under um, the Historical Society supervision masked and following social distancing rules and would be acceptable to the society. In addition, if you want to wait till it's over, um, that would also be acceptable. Um, she's awaiting the instructions from us. To me, that's not the public going in. That's maintenance of the building. And, maintenance and of the building, I'm, yeah. Just so, who pays for that? Is it, is it us or is it the sort of Well, that was part know. of the, I mean, they would, it says, um, if you approve adding the name but wish to have the work done by others, they could, but the society is willing to carry out the necessary work. It, it means one person, so more than likely I'll be the one okay. painting the wall if putting no the lettering on. Right. I'd have no issue with that. I have no issue with that. No. Okay. Having the Historical Society yeah, both. carry on and do both? both. Okay. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. All okay. all do, of it. do the work as, as they see fit, when they see fit. Mm -hmm. okay. How okay. they see fit. All right. I guess you, then you can ask the ladies if they have something else. I thought that we didn't. I'm sorry. It's fine. Janine Lynch, Park and Rec's chairman. Um, so just two last notes on um, public before we go out of session. You had mentioned about quarantining, vacation, um, employees coming back, things. What um, we've, Park has had a lot of employees going vacation out of New England, and we've been offering them hours outside of the gatehouse. So other duties, not with people, not in close, just as an mm -hmm. FYI of information of if, if you do come to a situation, that was an option that we took. So we didn't say, look, you have to stay home, you can't work. We said, you can come to work. You can't be inside the small, tight, enclosed gatehouse with other people. Makes sense. Plenty of outside jobs. Um, on another note, Parks would just like to bring to attention some of the things we've been dealing with at Chase Park recently. Some minor stuff, for example, before we were open, um, our supervisor opened up the gate so she could get in and start setting up and park her car, move cones, and she has the sign right in the middle of the driveway, stop here, and um, she did have an incident with a person that drove all the way around the sign and went into the parking lot 17 minutes before we clearly opened with all the signs and just when she went to talk to the woman was just giving her a hard time, just stuff like that. And, um, and another incident we had was... Um, staff had found um, two people smoking behind a building, um, marijuana, and um, they'd asked, that, you know, that's not allowed, it needs to stop, and there was an excuse given, a reason given of a medical marijuana card, but our policy is no smoking, whether or not <laughs> you're legally allowed to smoke that, it's no smoking policy period. And so there was an argument back and forth, 
And so um, at this point, I'll pause also upon learning that there were children there with this said person that were unattended in the water at that time, we took it upon that time to call the police mm -hmm. so they could at this point decide. And, and um, so the children were picked up by a parent and then the, um, the person that was smoking was also given a ride. Um, so, and then recently Friday night, we had a um, more of a major situation I, well, just general facts of just um, a, a no trespassing order had to be given because it just um, crossed the line where a situation just got out of hand. So um, just so people are aware what the staff is working with and dealing with at okay. Chase Park. It, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It can be dangerous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any correspondence of the business from the board? No? Uh, I just want to note that uh, um, Mr. Knapp got a hold of me, and we, we had talked about the, the water hole down here at uh, the cistern. Oh, yeah. At Duck Pond, yep. At Duck Pond. And, um, no, Moody Pond. Moody oh, Pond. Pond. Yes, okay. Moody Pond, excuse us. And uh, I noticed that the water level is up, so I figured he probably did something. He emailed me and said that the um, there were some residents that moved in, and they legally built a house that stopped up the water. Good. New residents. New residents. <laughs> I don't know if they're from the other side of the road or not, but... That's fine. Anyways, but he said that they were legal to do that, so he didn't Excellent. have to do anything. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. A little furry. How can they be yeah. Little furry residents yes. with rubbery tails. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so now they, the water's back and back the water's up coming back up to oh, where good. it should be. So. Something tells me after tonight it's going to go up, or after tomorrow night it's going to go up a little bit more. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, but like I said, it has come back up to me to a, a reasonable level. Good. Um, still not where I, I'd like it to be, mm -hmm. but um, well, it's starting to come back up. Exactly. So um, they found a they found a home. Started writing about the residents. <laughs> They are. <laughs> They're residents. The residents of Moody Pond. So <laughs> Yes. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that I think that that situation is taken care of now. Other than that, I have nothing. Chase and Ella. That's who they named. Chase and Ella <laughs> at Moody Pond. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know the children's names yet, though. <laughs> I make a motion we go into non-public <laughs> under 91A, Roman numeral 2. Uh, C. 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 Yeah. Is there a second? And with second. And then after that. Yeah, after that we will adjourn. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Take a roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. And after that, like I said, we will be adjourning. So have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you.